And Beth, you work with the uh, Opossums Pouch Sanctuary. Um, can you tell me about your organization a little bit? Um, I founded this organization. I've been a wildlife rehabilitator for 32 years. Um, I found the organization um, back in 2016 because we were slowly learning so many needed help all over the United States, Canada, and uh, Mexico and South America. So we network all over the United States and our number is out there. I don't care where you are, what time it is, you can always call our number and we will find you help. Um, and we strictly work with opossums, although I turn nothing away. And Zachary, uh, let's start with you. So tell me, um, you know, first where you live and then what happened that night. Was it Wednesday going into Thursday night? Yes, so it was one. Yeah, so it was Wednesday into Thursday night. Um, so I live out in Lowell, Michigan. Uh, I moved here at the end of 2020 um, in November. And I've, uh, I moved here from Philadelphia. Um, now, as pertaining to the incident that occurred on Wednesday, um, just before midnight or at midnight, um, I was driving back from a gas station um, on Fulton Street. And I made the right hand turn up Old Nash Avenue to head back to my house. Um, partially up the hill, um, maybe a quarter of the way up or half the way up the hill, um, I saw a dead possum and a live possum in the middle of the street. So I stopped my vehicle and I turned on my hazards and I reached for my phone and I realized I did not have my phone. So I kept my hazards lights on to make sure that um, the animals weren't uh, struck by any other uh, potential vehicles that could pass. And um, I kind of just went into my car to see if I had anything that I could, you know, contain the opossum with so that I could, you know, safely get it out of the road and then, you know, take it to a place that I know that they'd be able to handle um, taking care of it. Um, I looked at my car, I didn't have anything to grab it with. And so I stayed there. Um, I, I was there for maybe five to 10 minutes. I was, you know, you know, trying to keep the possum from being hit. And in that entire duration, nobody passed. Um, no other motorist drove by um, until one motorist did come by and I flagged him down and I told him like, hey, um, if there's any way that you could contact my roommate, there's a possum here. And um, I believed it to be a uh, juvenile possum that was trying to get back to its mother. And it wasn't, under and you know, obviously it doesn't understand what happened. So um, he contacted my roommate and my roommate was going to bring me a box. And in that, as soon as, um, I started to speak to my roommate, Officer uh, Stevens arrived on scene and immediately uh, engaged his hazard lights and, uh, or not his hazard, his police lights. And he steps out of the patrol car and the first thing he says is, what the F are you doing in the middle of the road? And I said, there's a possum. And he said, well, you're standing in the, uh, you're standing in the middle of the street uh, uh, for an effing possum. And then he walks past and I'm trying to explain why well, I don't want it to get hit by a car. And I'm trying to explain all this to him. And as I'm explaining that I was just trying to help it, he just walked over and just started kicking it across the street. And um, it tumbled, it rolled, and when it hit the grass, it was shaking a little bit. And then it rolled back over and re, you know, sat itself back up. And I could see that there was blood on its nose. And then the officer told me um, I could leave that I'm free to go. So I left and the motorist who, um, stopped and called my roommate, stayed there the entire time. And when I went to turn towards my house, he came up and followed. And I spoke to him about um, that and the, uh, in the uh, interaction I had with the, uh, the officer about um, the officer um, just kicked the possum. I told him I was very flustered and that I really wanted to get home to get a box so that I could help the possum. So from the time that I, the police officer told me to leave the scene, um, the time I went home, got a box, and then got back, maybe 10 to 15 minutes had passed total, and the possum had not moved um, at all. And when I went to capture it, it did not put up a bite. Um, it was very easy. I just easily picked it up um, by the scruff of its neck, and I placed him into the, uh, the box. And um, it was midnight, and there weren't any phone numbers, really, and I'm... I, Every place I was calling was closed, so I just went online and I uh, came across Beth's number. So I contacted her and then she later got in contact with me and told me that um, she had a rehabber 
um, Allison over at the Wildlife Rehab Center in Grand Rapids who would be willing to take her take in the uh, possum. And so um, I had work the next day. So I had my roommate went and dropped the opossum off at the facility. And then um, since then it's been in their care. Tell me about how the uh, possum's doing now. Um, I spoke to Allison. I don't know if Zachary um, has spoken with him or not, but I did speak uh, with via text today. Um, I also spoke with another member there, the facility, a volunteer, and she said that although the opossum was very, very afraid, um, he had some bleeding from the nose from where he was kicked. They've got all that cleaned up. Um, they medicated. Normally, that would be antibiotics and some very mild pain medication, but that they were keeping him very calm, very quiet, and he would be observed for a period of time, period of days, however long. Of course, with everything going on with the police department, he may need to be held for a while, but um, he, he is expected to recover. And what happened to the other opossum was that one playing dead and then went away or was that one still there and actually dead so that one was deceased um when i had arrived on scene already and um the officer you can see in the body camera footage the first one that was kicked was the live possum the one that was picked up and moved off to the grass and just dropped that was the dead one and that one was the one that the one I was concerned about kept trying to go to. And like I said, if it kept trying to go to it with the dead one being in the middle of the road, eventually that one would have been hit by a car as well. Yeah, um, you know, tell me why you stopped. I mean, it's not every day. It's not every person who would stop. So tell me why you did. Um, so I do have uh, an affinity for animals. Um, I have... I, I always had exotic animals um, all throughout my life. I've had Argentine tegus, I've had snakes, I've had iguanas, chinchillas, ferrets, alligators, caimans. Um, I've, I've gone through and had almost any walk of life. I've, I've had it at one point or another um, when I was younger growing up with my parents. Um, my mom used to rescue and foster dogs a lot when I was a kid. She used to rescue and foster basically anything that um, they needed help with. There was one point where they, uh, had my mom help with uh, rehoming 60 birds. So we had 60 parrots making a fuss at our house all the time. Um, so yeah, just through, you know, my parents and stuff, I've grown up and I do have an affinity for animals. So when I pulled, when I pulled up and I saw the dead one and I knew the other one was alive and, you know, I know for a fact that, you know, it's either going to be a baby that's trying to, you know, go to its mother at, or, um, it could be a, uh, uh, a male who's, you know, trying to court a mate and doesn't understand that the mate um, that it was going for got hit by a car and is now dead. So when it stays in the street and is still trying to do the thing that it wants to do to, you know, mate and do what, it, you know, complete the circle of life, um, it finds itself just standing by a, a possum that's dead and it doesn't understand why because it had just gotten hit. And so you know, that you got to account for that initial shock um, and making sure that the animal is going to be okay. Um, yeah, because like I said, with it staying in the road and just trying to be beside the other possum being dead in the street, whether it be for reasons of it, you know, it being a parent or according to me, um, it was just bound for that one to get hit. And you also have to account for the fact that, um, yes, while I... I did put, you know, I did stop in the middle of the street. You also have to account for the fact that there is also the potential hazard of, you know, other motorists swerving out of the way to avoid, you know, hitting said possum. And um, so, uh, you know, just, uh, I was just trying to do, you know, I was trying to do my best to look out for, you know, anybody that could have been involved. I was trying to make sure that the possum was okay. I was trying to make sure that, you know, any other motorist didn't hit it, any motorist swerved out of the way, you know, trying to avoid it and then getting into a serious accident. You know, there's a lot of things that were going to my mind when I was trying to, to help the animal. You know, it's, uh, it's clear that you were upset um, after the interaction that you had with the officer. And, you know, we, we couldn't hear, unfortunately, in that body cam, your initial interaction, because it was still turning on. Um, but, you know, we see the rest of the interaction play out and we see how he moves the first possum. Now in your Facebook status, you did say that it went a ways 
and you know you can see that it, it kind of didn't so you know when i think when people saw the video a couple people kind of took a step back a little bit from their comments originally would you like to address that i would love to address it only because i have been in zach's situation so many times and when you say an animal is kicked 10 feet, I don't think Zachary meant 10 feet into the air. If you look at that video to the corner of the hood of that car, this opossum went 10 feet very easily. And it, he wasn't satisfied with that and he kicked him again. You can see the opossum flipping over twice. There is no way that animal did that if he wasn't lifted into the air by the kick. But I don't think Zachary meant 10 foot into the air. It was 10 foot across. And if you really measure 10 foot, that's not that far if you're just watching a video. And another thing I'd like to add is if you look at the video, that was a stretch of road that was it wasn't like it was on a curve. That was a long stretch of road late at night with a lot of traffic. He did exactly what I have done hundreds of times. And we animal people do that. And we probably put our life in danger a lot of times by doing things like that. But it's just because we love the animals. But I, I don't like the way the videos are being shown. I think the first part of that video where the audio is cut off, it's off for a reason. And that reason is exactly what Zach has said. We don't want to concentrate on the cussing and everything. That is so minor compared to what happened afterwards. Zach, I'll give you the floor to speak as well. Yeah, uh, um, like Beth said, um, especially um, you could see um, from my perspective where I'm standing off um, to the left of my car and he's in the middle of, you know, the possums pretty close to the center of my car. And when he kicked it, like I said, it tumbled across the road a fair amount. And you can see that it hurt the possum. And um, then he kicked it a second time. And, you know, then I watched him pick up the dead one and throw it on the side of the road before just ushering me away. And so it, it was it, like, it was so far out of left field, like, you know, any situation where you'd see a motorist stopped and they have their hazard lights, they're obviously indicating that there's a hazard of some kind, any type of dangerous situation. And I'm alerting other motorists that that is the, what I'm stopped for. That is the purpose of me having the hazard lights. That's why I use them and I use them properly. When the officer showed up and immediate, like immediately initiated um, to me what felt like a, you know, an aggressive stance, against me being stopped in the road, not for me helping the opossum. Um, so in my, from what it feels like to me was the officer just wanted to get me out of the road as quick as possible, did not care about the well-being of the, the animal um, that he had kicked. And um, yeah, it, it, it just really, like, it took me, it, I, I don't usually, I'm never really left speechless. Um, I usually try to do my best um, to make make it known when I feel like injustices or anything negative is happening. And that's that doesn't just go for members of law enforcement. That goes for anybody. Um, so when I witnessed him kick the animal, I was so stunned. I literally, I, I couldn't even speak. Um, and when I got back, I was very emotional at my house, like running through and everybody... You know, everybody's trying to help me get the box because I, I was just so laser focused. On, I just wanted to help that animal. And I know that that animal was injured because it was kicked. And the tumbling across the road and it, you know, it, for a second while I'm watching this animal twitch on the ground and try to correct itself after it got kicked, it almost looked like it was seizing. And like, I know it, that's not what happened, but it's just when it's twitching and you're seeing this animal is obviously writhing in pain. When I was there for 10 minutes before, that opossum was not injured. There was nothing wrong with that opossum. All it was trying to do was be near that other one that, is, that was dead. And that place happened to be in the middle of the street. That was causing potential hazards for the opossum, other motorists. And I felt as though I did what was necessary to alleviate the situation and to best help the animals involved. 
the Lowell Police Department, I believe, um, has found no wrongdoing in what the officer did. I take it that the two of you uh, disagree with that finding. So, you know, tell me what you would like to see done, if anything. And on the flip side, you know, I think there's some people out there who might, you know, disagree with what with what um with what happened and how you put it out there. Um, so, you know, what would you like to say to those people too? Um, so, from my stance of trying to make it known. Um, to the public. Um, I've always, you know, I'm, I, when I, like I said, I see something like that happen. It, it, it bothered me that much that I wanted to make it known that that happened. That's why I made the post that I made and uh, I made it public. And that's why I made sure that the Lowell Police Department knew that I was upset about it. I had told them before that I was going to file a complaint. Um, I, you know, after I'd already gone back and gotten the possum, um, I had a, called law enforcement to see which officers were in the area. That's how I figured out it was Officer Stevens that was, that was there. And I went through all the steps to try to make sure that I go about it the right way of filing the, the complaint. And then um, when I filed the complaint, um, I was met with a lot of intimidation. And um, the, it, it's, it was a very scary situation being in the police station when I went to pile the complaint. Um, you know, uh, I've never had uh, complaints that I've had to file before, um, you know, back in, you know, my home state of Pennsylvania. Uh, I've always sat in the waiting room and they give you a piece of paper and you fill it out. And they brought me into the interrogation room. They uh, put on their own cameras and tried to record everything that I was saying. And then shortly after they brought me back out into the lobby and they showed me the body camera footage. And after I saw the body camera footage, the first thing that, I'm not sure of this officer's name, but the officer that showed me the body camera footage, um, the first thing he said to me after it was done was we're out here getting shot at every day, which was a strong indication of me that he wasn't taking what I was complaining about serious at all. And so I told him, um, if this is, you know, if it's going to derail to this point, I'm not interested in being in this conversation. I'm here to file the complaint about what happened yesterday. Um, I'm, I, and that was basically it. And so when I said I still was going to follow through with the report, um, he did, you know, cite the fact that the audio was muted and that I, you know, I could, he threatened and said that I could be prosecuted for filing a false complaint. And so that's why I told you when you contacted me that I had to, you know, contact lawyers and ask the proper questions before I went about speaking publicly in regards to the situation. Um, so that's why I went about it the way that I did. Um, what was the other part of that question that you had? Um, about the officer with wrongdoing. And just if so, you think that was the right course of action, I guess, from the department. So obviously I don't believe that that was the right course of action. I believe any person with any sense of compassion would be able to look at that video and see that the, the way that the officer moved, you know, moved that was aggressive. The kick hurt that animal. It was not moved with the foot as stated by them. That was a kick. Um, it's just, you think, you know, people who are sworn in to, you know, protect and uphold, you know, and try to maintain that strong sense of community in our area that something like that, you know, it, it's, it's so far out of left field, you know, you, you just don't expect something like that, especially when the animal is uninjured. Um, and as far as, you know, course of action, um, when I first filed it, all I wanted originally was, you know, I wanted him reprimanded for what he did. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm never the type of person that, you know, this, throw this person on a platter, blah, 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 and do all that. I wanted it to be known that he did wrong. And I wanted the police to try to correct the fact that he did wrong. And the police took the stance that he was in the right and moved it over and sent it out uh, over to Kent County prosecution to deal with it. So I don't feel like Lowell Police Department um, 
did an adequate uh, job of doing anything um, as far as reprimanding the officer for his actions. Last question, is there anything I didn't ask you that you'd like to put out there? Either of you? Well, I, I, you know, when Zach called me, and, and I've done this 32 years, as I've mentioned, I'm pretty good with detecting the person's feelings. Zach was so upset over what he, I felt really bad for him that he had saw this and like in most cases, if you're in front of a police officer, his everything in his heart was telling him not to allow that kick, go run, grab the little opossum, get it safe. But like everybody else, what are the repercussions to trying to do the right thing? And I could feel how upset Zach was. Um, we got the numbers for him. Um, he was going to call right away. And I could see the sincerity that he had for what had taken place. Now... If you, I mean, the public and much of the public feels as we do. If you look at their police department's homepage right now, uh, people who love and respect animals are shredding that department. And it's been going on for several hours now. Um, as a wildlife rehabber, you would not believe the abuse we see. You would not believe the beatings with the shovels, the shooting with BB guns, and I, the, the dousing with with gasoline and setting on fire and people believe they can do this because it's a wild animal but every wild animal should live a life free of fear and pain and i think that is our responsibility i do not feel um what officer stevens did was ethically professionally correct in any way and I think instead of trying to cover this up, and I have been married into the police department for 20 some odd years, uh, no longer, but I know what happens and they will stand together. That is a fact. That is not my opinion. But, you know, why not correct him in what he did? Why not at least admit, no, this is not how things should have gone? Um, I don't see that happening. And if I, I read the reviews of the police department from back a year ago, and there has been a lot of issues that the public have had. I just think this is something that these officers need to go back and be schooled on. Um, there is help. A lot of people don't understand. There's wildlife rehabbers, and we can't do this job on our own. It's people like Zachary who stop and help these animals, and that's the only way we can save them. But I just think the, the, the cover-up to me is the biggest problem here and not trying to get this officer or all the police department. Let a wildlife um, rehabber, Allison Swanson is one of the best in Grand Rapids. Uh, I spent time with her up there a few years ago. Um, let her come in to the departments and explain her what she does, how she can help. If this situation was to happen again, what she could do to rectify it. Maybe she could come in and educate departments and animal control. We try to do that all the time. I just feel like this was a very disservice to Zachary and the animals, you know, especially this little opossum that was, I've been on the situation. I know what the opossum was doing. It's breeding season. He quite possibly was pursuing her who wanted nothing to do with him. And she decided to cross the road and got hit. And this little boy sat there beside the female. He was just sitting there. Um, so he wasn't harmed, but he was after the kick. And that was wrong. Anything else, Zach? Is Zach or Zachary, how would you like to be referred to? Um, either either is fine. Okay. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I like I said, um, I, I would just like to see um, Lowell, uh, be able to, you know, admit that maybe this situation um, could have been handled differently and maybe admit that there was definitely some wrongdoing done. Um, and, you know, just address those situations going forward. And, you know, don't, you know, like when they made their initial statement, they made their initial statement in the comment section of the, of a Facebook crime post that nobody saw. And, it was until hours after that when people started like re like reposting it because that that post got flooded with thousands of comments and you couldn't find you know that post that 
came from the police department and they never addressed it publicly. Um, and it took so long with so many like outpour, like so much public outcry and they stayed silent. They didn't make any, they didn't say anything to anybody and um, anybody who contacted them, um, a lot of them were just, you know, kind of just stonewalled into not, not being able to do anything. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just, I also, and I guess the other thing I would like to say is um, I would like to be in a community where if I do see something wrong happen, I can walk into a police station and I can report that something wrong has happened without feeling like my own well-being and everything is at stake, you know, because I feel like, you know, and it, it, it sounds, I, I feel like, you know, I'm putting myself out there and, I, you know, putting myself out in the limelight, you know, I'm open for public scrutiny and stuff, all that because I just wanted to do the right thing for the animal that was there, you know, and so, you know, there's always, you know, everybody has their own opinions on stuff. So whether, you know, you're for, you know, our side and you agree with what we saw happen, or, you know, whether you agree with the side of the police, you know, it's just, there's always going to be those, you know, conflicting opinions and you know, if I can't go and say, you know, feel like I can confidently address these things to my police department without fear of prosecution or, you know, anything like it, 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 it makes me not feel comfortable with, you know, in an emergency situation dialing 911. Um, and I guess that, that, that would be like the last thing. It's just, um, not feeling safe uh, and just the looming intimidation and the, the threats from the police department just for, you know, trying to do the right thing.